The processor socket is the place on the motherboard where the CPU is placed. The socket is a square plastic or metal holder with multiple holes to accommodate the pins on the bottom of the processor. As these holes and pins make contact, they provide physical and electrical contact between the motherboard and the CPU. Modern CPU sockets are called ZFs, which stands for Zero Insertion Force, and it basically means that the CPU is installed in the socket with no force. It just drops into the socket easily. There are different types of CPU socket designs called packages. One of the most common types of these packages is the PGA or pin grid array. The PGA package is a typical square ZIF socket design with holes and a lockdown lever. The latest in socket design packages is called LGA, which stands for Land Grid Array. The LGA socket is a metal casing with a door that closes over the CPU and locks down with a lever. Unlike previous socket versions that have holes, the LGA has pins that make contact with the bottom of the processor. LGA processors do not have pins. Instead, they have pads that rest on the LGA socket pins. For the CompTIA A Plus exam, you're going to need to know a few characteristics about certain socket types. And these socket types are categorized by two different brands. They are Intel and AMD. Starting with the Intel sockets that use the LGA package, the first one that we're going to talk about is the LGA 775 socket, also known as Socket T. It was released in 2004, and it has 775 pins as its name states. The LGA-775 was the successor to the Socket 478, and it was designed for the Pentium 4 and Pentium dual-core processors. Next is the LGA-1366, and as its name states, this has 1366 pins, and was also known as Socket B. It was released back in 2008 and succeeded the LGA-775. The LGA-1366 uses the Intel Core i7 and the Xeon processors. The LGA-1156 also known as Socket H or Socket H1 was released in 2009 and this has 1,156 pins. This was the first socket to be used by the Intel Core i3 and i5 processors. Next is the LGA1155, also known as Socket H2. This was designed to replace the LGA1156, and it has 1,155 pins which is one less than the LGA-1156. However, the CPUs that are designed for the 1155 and 1156 are not compatible because the notches in the sockets are different. It was released in 2011, and these were designed for the Intel CPUs that use the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge architectures. Next, we have the LGA-1150, and this is also known as Socket H3. It has 1,150 pins and was released in 2013. The LGA-1150 supports Haswell and Broadwell-based microprocessors and has succeeded the LGA-1155. The last of the Intel sockets is the LGA-2011, also known as Socket R. The LGA-2011 has two 2011 pins and was released in 2011 and has succeeded the LGA-1366. This socket was designed for high-performance CPUs that are based on the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors. The next group of sockets is the AMD sockets, which utilize the PGA package. And the first socket is the AM3. Socket AM3 was released in 2009 
and is a successor to the AM3 Plus socket. The AM3 has 941 pins. Next is the socket AM3 Plus, which is a successor and a modification of the AM3. It has 942 pins and was released in 2011. The AM3 Plus does retain compatibility with AM3, so CPUs designed for the AM3 Plus will work in AM3 sockets. The next socket is FM1 and this was released in 2011. It has 905 pins, and these were designed for the AMD APU processors. APU stands for Accelerated Processing Unit, and these were designed to act as a CPU and a graphics accelerator on a single chip. Next is FM2 and this has 904 pins and was released in 2012. And then, last is the FM2 Plus, which was released in 2014. This has 906 pins, and this was in the new revision of the FM2 socket. The central processing unit, or CPU, is the main component on the motherboard. It is the brain of the computer where all the data processing takes place. It is in charge of executing program instructions and logical calculations. The CPU is the largest component on the motherboard. It is a square chip that is inserted into the motherboard in a plastic or metal holder called a CPU socket. Directly on top of a CPU is the heat sink and fan, and these are used to keep the CPU from overheating. The speed of the CPU is measured in megahertz. For instance, 1 megahertz equals 1 million cycles per second. 500 megahertz equals 500 million cycles per second. And 1 gigahertz equals 1 billion cycles per second, and so on. Today's high-end processors average a speed of over 3 gigahertz per second. Inside the processor is the core. The core is where the reading and execution of instructions take place. A processor that has a single core processes instructions one at a time, but today's high-end processors have more than one core. These are called multi-core processors, and they can process more instructions than a single core processor which gives multi-core the ability to multitask and have a greater overall performance. Some examples of multi-core processors are dual-core processors, which have two cores. Another example is a quad-core processor, which has four cores. Two of the biggest manufacturers of processors are Intel and AMD. Intel, being the largest manufacturer of processors, was founded in the late 60s and has since dominated the CPU market for a number of years until the rise of AMD started to become its chief competitor. Some of the Intel processors are known as the 286, 386, 486, Celeron, and Pentium processors. Advanced Micro Devices, or AMD, is the second largest manufacturer of processors. AMD was also founded in the late 60s, but it didn't start to compete with Intel in the CPU market until the mid-1990s. Some of the AMD processors are known as the K5, K6, Athlon, Duron, and the Sempron processors. Their higher-end processors include the Athlon 64, Opteron, and Phenom. CPUs can come in 32 or 64-bit versions. The difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit is the way it handles memory. 
The bit size of the CPU refers to the memory it can address. A 32-bit CPU can reference 2 to the 32nd power bytes of memory, which equals about 4 gigabytes. However, a 64-bit CPU can reference 2 to the 64th power bytes of memory, which equals about 16 exabytes, which is 4 billion times more memory than a 32-bit CPU. Now, that number is so huge that it's virtually unlimited because we will never need to use that amount of memory. So, going back to what we stated before, for a data or program to run, it needs to be loaded into RAM first. So the data is stored on the hard drive, then from the hard drive it is loaded into RAM, and once it's loaded into RAM, the CPU can now access the data or run the program. Now, in a 32-bit system, since the maximum amount of memory it can support is 4 gigabytes, it may not be enough to hold all the data that the CPU needs to make the computer run as fast as possible. And when this happens, then some of the data has to be kept on the hard drive to compensate for the low memory. So, instead of data going from RAM to the CPU, it has to do extra work by going back to the slower hard drive, and when this happens, it slows down the computer. But in a 64-bit system, it's able to store a lot more memory than 4 gigabytes, which means that more data can be loaded into the faster RAM than on a slower hard drive. Because they can store more data on the faster RAM than on a slower hard drive, the computer can run a lot faster. So in a nutshell, this is why a 64-bit system is faster than a 32-bit system. There's also what's called memory cache. The memory cache is made of SRAM, or static RAM, which is very fast memory when compared to regular DRAM that is used for primary memory. The memory cache is the processor's internal memory, and its job is to hold data and instructions waiting to be used by the processor. So basically, what cache does is that it holds common data that it thinks the CPU is going to access over and over again, because when the CPU needs to access certain data, it always checks the faster cache of memory first to see if the data it needs is there. And if it's not, then the CPU will have to go back to the slower primary memory, or RAM, to find the data it needs. So that's why cache memory is so important, because if a CPU can access what it needs from the faster cache memory, then the faster the computer will perform. The memory cache comes in different levels. For instance, there is a level 1 cache, which is also called the primary cache. Level 1 cache is located on the processor itself, so it runs at the same speed as the processor. This makes it the fastest cache memory on the computer. We also have the level 2 cache, which is also called the external cache. Level 2 cache is used to catch recent data accesses from the processor that were not caught by the level 1 cache. So, in a nutshell, if the CPU can't find the data it needs on the level 1 cache, it then searches the level 2 cache for the data. If level 2 doesn't have it, then it has to go back to the regular RAM to find the data it needs. Level 2 cache is generally located on a separate chip on the motherboard, or in modern CPUs, it is also located on the processor. Level 2 cache is larger than level 1 cache, but it's not as fast as level 1 cache. One of the main and most important components you'll find on the motherboard is the chipset. Older motherboards were designed with a lot of different chips scattered all over the motherboard. There were chips for different things, like chips for bus controllers, memory controllers, keyboard controllers, and so on. So, they had a lot of different chips controlling different functions on the motherboard. As technology progressed, Computer engineers decided to reduce the number of chips and have them in a more centralized location. 
So instead of having these different chips scattered all over the motherboard, controlling different functions, they reduced the number of chips to do the same job and condensed them to only a few chips, or what's now called a chipset. A chipset is a smaller set of chips that has replaced a larger number of chips. And the chipset's job is to control data flow between the CPU, the peripherals, bus slots, and memory. So, all of the different parts of the computer communicate with the CPU through the chipset. The chipset consists of two chips. One is called the North Bridge, and the other is called the South Bridge. The North Bridge is located in the upper or northern part of the motherboard, providing you're looking at the motherboard in the upright position. It is located near the CPU and is directly connected to the CPU. It is also directly connected to the memory and the AGP and PCI Express slots. So, in order for the CPU to communicate with the memory and the AGP or PCI Express bus, it has to go through the North Bridge first. The North Bridge acts like a communication middleman between a CPU, AGP, or PCI Express, and memory. The other chip is called the South Bridge, and the South Bridge is located at the bottom or southern portion of the motherboard near the PCI bus slots. The South Bridge connects to the PCI bus slots, SATA, IDE connectors, and USB ports. The South Bridge is responsible for the lower portion of the motherboard, while the North Bridge is responsible for the upper portion. There is no direct connection between the CPU and the lower portion of the motherboard. So if the PCI, USB, IDE, or SATA ports needed to communicate with the CPU, the information has to go through the South Bridge and then up through the North Bridge and then to the CPU. The North Bridge is faster than the South Bridge, and that's because the CPU, the PCIe, AGP, and memory are the most used and most important components of the motherboard, so they need to operate at the highest speeds possible. The slower South Bridge communicates with a PCI bus, SATA, and IDE connectors, and USB ports, and they don't need to be as fast as the other components. So basically, the higher speed components are connected to the North Bridge, and the slower components are connected to the South Bridge. Now, both the North and South Bridges make these connections to various parts of the motherboard using pathways called a bus. A bus is simply a set of pathways that allows data and signals to travel between components on the motherboard. The motherboard contains several kinds of buses that vary in speed and bandwidth. So for instance, if a bus speed is said to operate at 66 MHz, then that means that that particular bus can send data at 66 million cycles per second. The higher the bus speed, the faster the computer can send data, which improves the performance of the computer. A motherboard's bus speed generally refers to the speed of the front side bus. The front side bus is a connection between the CPU and the North Bridge chipset.